Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Legal from the University of Detroit School of Dentistry, Department of Biomedical Sciences and Diagnostic Services. In this series of videos, we will be demonstrating the protocols and procedures for digital x-ray sensor placement. I'll be assisted by my friend Manny. What do you mean assisted by? I mean you will help show the students how to properly place the digital sensors in a patient's mouth. So how do you get this job? Well, Manny, if we look at the hierarchy chart of the dental school, we see the dean, supported by the dean of academics and the dean of clinics. They, in turn, are supported by the department chairs and the course directors. I am down here. Down there? Way down there. Are you the best talent they could get? Manny, I'm the only one who would work with you. Hey, wait a minute. The dental school uses the Air Techniques Phosphor Plate Digital Sensor and Scanner System. These are the scanner plates. There are two sizes, number one and number two, that correspond to conventional dental film sizes. Number one sensors are used in a vertical orientation for anterior periapical images. Number two sensors are used in a horizontal orientation for posterior imaging. These are the protection sleeves. They are sized narrow for number one and wider for number two. The sensor plate is placed face down in the sleeve. The adhesive strip is exposed and the envelope is sealed. What is the purpose of the protector sleeve? The general answer is infection control. The scanner plates cannot be sterilized or disinfected by usual means. The sleeve protects them from contamination during placement in a patient's mouth and keeps them germ-free for subsequent downstream processing and reuse. What sources of contamination might a dentist or hygienist encounter during x-ray placement? I mean, taking x-rays seems like a pretty innocuous project. There are three possible sources of contamination. Extraoral infections. For example, a patient might have a cold sore or a diabetic patient may be battling a bout of angular chelitis. Bleeding can occur in the course of taking an x-ray picture. For example, a patient may have a large mandibular tori. The skin over tori is very, very thin, and it is easily cut if the sensor is placed on it and the patient is asked to bite down. Other sources of bleeding include trauma. For example, a child could take a playground fall and break an anterior tooth and cut an upper lip. When brought to the dental office, the lip is bleeding and the dentist or hygienist needs to take an x-ray film to assess the damage to the tooth. Other sources of bleeding include intraoperative films. For example, in the placement of an implant, the surgeon may require an x-ray film to determine the length or proximity to adjacent critical anatomic structures. The trephin, or hole in the bone, will be bleeding while the x-ray film is taken. Another example of intraoperative bleeding might be a fractured root tip during the course of an extraction. The socket will be bleeding while the dentist is taking the x-ray picture to determine the position of the remaining root tip. Another source of contamination could be pus. There are two sources of infections pus that dentists may encounter. One, a periodontal abscess, and number two, an endodontic abscess with draining fistula. When the sensor is placed in the mouth and the patient is asked to bite down on the bite stick, pressure is applied to the tooth, the tooth presses against the periodontal ligament, Two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time, and the pus is extruded either through the gingival sulcus or through a draining fistulous tract. You will notice that the image side of the sensor is placed face down in the protective sleeve. Why is that? The image side, the blue side of the sensor, is sensitive to the full spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. For diagnostic purposes, we use X radiation. Outside on a sunny day is ultraviolet radiation. Room light or fluorescent lights in the clinic give off a spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. 
by placing the sensor face down in the sleeve, we protect the resultant diagnostic image from the effect of ambient light prior to processing. The XCP unit uses three different holders to locate the sensors in a patient's mouth. The blue holder holds the narrow number one sensor in a vertical orientation to accommodate the longer but narrower anterior teeth in the narrow, rounded anterior part of the arch. The yellow sensor holds the wider number two sensor in a whole horizontal orientation to accommodate the image of the roots of posterior teeth in the flatter, deeper posterior part of the arch. The red bite wing holders can orient a number two sensor in a horizontal or vertical orientation and those needs will be discussed in a later video. The sensor plate is aligned in the XCP holder so that the image side is exposed to the X-ray beam for both anterior and posterior periapical images. The black side of the sleeve is fully visible and the logo side is placed against the holder upright. Of all the printing on the logo side of the sensor, only the manufacturer's mark, the letter A, will be superimposed on the image. The purpose of the A is to orient the image in the computer after scanning. The rule guiding placement of the A in an apical or occlusal orientation in the holder is to allow the A to be superimposed, but not to interfere with the diagnostic image. For anterior films, the A is placed at the apical corner of the sensor, away from the bite stick. I remember a single rule, A anterior apex, like the road service, triple A. In this way, the A is superimposed on the image away from the narrow conical shaped roots of anterior teeth. In addition, the A is not superimposed on the coronal or incisal part of the image, which might interfere with interproximal or incisal edge evaluation on the resultant image. The A is placed in the holder away from the bite stick. Conversely, the A is placed at the occlusal toward the bite stick for posterior periapical imaging. In this position, the superimposed A does not interfere with the apical images of the posterior teeth. It is superimposed over the occlusal image. The interproximal of the teeth and the interproximal bone are evaluated on the bite wing x-ray. In this way, the superimposed A does not interfere with the diagnostic image of the apex of the teeth. So let's take a look at our clinic setup. This is the x-ray head and the x-ray camera. The arm has eight points of adjustment for us to position the head adjacent to patient's face. This part of the x-ray camera is called the culminator. The root word is column. Inside the head, the radiation is produced when electricity jumps from the cathode and anode. The electrons inside the head have no brain. They bounce around and scatter randomly until they find their way out the window into the culminator. You may have seen the way lottery numbers are picked. The random ping pong balls bounce around until they find their way out the opening. The electrons do the same thing here. They bounce around inside the head until they find their way through the window and out into the culminator. In the culminator, they still bounce randomly and bouncing side to side on the walls of the culminator until they come to the end. And by then, they are lined up into a straight line for a direct beam. As the electrons leave the end of the culminator, they are aligned into a straight line. They pass through the skin, through the teeth, and onto the sensor. And they attack the sensor at a 90 degree angle, not at a random or a scattered angle. This gives us a clear, crisp diagnostic image. The orientation ring is located close to the patient's face. This minimizes magnification error. As the particles leave the edge of the culminator, they spread in a fan-shaped cone. The further the cone from the object, the wider is the pattern of spray. 
the particles hit the sensor on an angle and the image of the tooth is enlarged. The enlargement can be so great that the image of the tooth exceeds the size of the sensor to accommodate it. This is the control panel for the x-ray camera. There are four areas of interest for the operator. One is the visual light telling us that radiation is being emitted. Second are the control buttons for the dosage as prescribed by the faculty. Also is the control button that emits the radiation. You hold the button until the sound stops. You can continue to hold the button until tomorrow. All you will get is a pool of drool. For infection control, the panel is covered by a protective sleeve. The operator is directed only to touch the controls through the blue sleeve, protecting the rest of the surface from contamination.